Hi, I'm just going to run through a very quick tutorial on how we can burn timecode into our final movie. So the idea is that uh, you've, you've rendered your final movie but you want the timecode displayed on it so people can refer to each individual frame uh, as, they, as they see fit. So let's just very quickly uh, create a sequence. So there we go, so there's, our, there's our sequence and as you can see obviously what I'm trying to achieve, I want some timecode down here to display uh, as the movie is running. So what you can do, you can select your clip and go to effects, video filters, video, timecode reader and there we go, that's that's what we're looking for. So we've now got the timecode uh, displayed conveniently at the bottom of the R. Ah, right, so obviously what happens is that is only applied to one clip. So you would have to, if you can do it this way, have to apply the effect to each clip. Um, but as you'll see, this is reading the timecode from those clips. Uh, so that's at 408, and that's reset the timecode. That's not what you want. You want a consistent timecode across the whole uh, movie. Uh, another thing you could do um, is you could generate a slug, uh, like I've done here, or uh, go to your effects. Um, where are we? Video generators, uh, matte, Color. Let's generate a color. Great. Or oh, actually, let's, let's go for color solid because I know that will come up as blue. Uh, and we could drag that onto a new video layer even uh, here and make it as long as our movie. Uh, and then we could perhaps um, apply that effect to, uh, or we could apply a video timecode generator. So that's now generating timecode, and we'll come to this formatting in a second. And oh, of course, no, we've got this blue here, so we're going to also then have to go into here uh, video filters, key, uh, we'll do a chroma key, -er, and we'll go to the chroma key -er controls. And um, you know, now we're going to select blue to get rid of the blue. Oh, that and there we go. So that's a that's done more or less what we want. Obviously, we'd like to change this to probably to be formatted, but now I've got a big render bar here because we've got quite a lot of processing going on. So yeah, so again, that's not ideal. What happens if I decide I want to add another clip in, in, into my sequence? Yeah, what's, what's gonna happen there? Then obviously uh, I don't have time code at this point, so I'm going to have to drag that and make sure that that's all the same length. So that, that's just not a viable um, way of, of, of doing this. Oops. So. Back to the tutorial, uh, this, is, this is very neat. We're gonna change the name of our sequence to master. So basically I've shown you how not to do it. Uh, and we're gonna create a new sequence called master with timecode. So let's open that one up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna embed our movie, our, our finished completed movie into a new sequence. So there we go, so it's exactly the same, uh, but this is treated as one object. Uh, the beauty of embedding this sequence is that if we update our master movie in any way, this will just uh, reflect those changes. Now the cool thing is if you select this master sequence, uh, the embedded master sequence, and control click or right click, open in viewer. Now we can um, go to the video filters on this uh, and add that timecode reader back in. Now what this is doing, this is reading the timecode uh, that Final Cut generates uh, which starts from the beginning of the clip, and this is doing exactly what we want it to do. It's just incrementing as, as the movie is playing uh, right up to the end of our sequence, uh, so that at any point uh, this can be referred to. So what happens if we want to add uh, that clip that we had up here? We want to insert that. Let's insert that here. Um, just put it in that point there. So now this is this has changed our our, move, our entire movie has now changed in terms of the time code. Uh, but if we go back to our master of the time code, this is just automatically reflected. There's nothing further to do apart from play it. Uh, and there we go. There's our time code sequence being displayed with our new clip uh, embedded in the middle. Uh, if I just go somewhere towards the end, there's all the other clips that we had before. And obviously the time code is just extended out. Uh, and also notice that there is no additional rendering required in my particular setup anyway. Um, okay, just, just some other things. Uh, in this filter, you can, you've can you got some control over these parameters. Uh, so we could change the label, so we could say just time code space. There we go. Uh, and the size, you can obviously make bigger and smaller, and that 
you know, wherever you want. You can position it where you like, so we'll have it up there or to the right or down to the bottom. Uh, and you can change the font color, etc. etc. So that's that's a bit of an overview of the adding a time code to uh, a finished movie.